I watched that match on Thursday night against Atalanta and that was two hours wasted two hours I could have spent doing something else two hours I will never get back today I watched the match against Crystal Palace and that was two hours wasted two hours I could have spent doing something else and two hours that I will never get back as I was sitting and watching the match as it unfolded I was holding out hope just hoping that they could turn things around pull out a win somehow some way but now looking back in hindsight it was probably blind hope more than anything else especially in light of how terrible the team was in both matches now, what happened on Thursday pretty much almost it was almost a carbon copy you know, today's match against Crystal Palace don't be fooled by the, the, the statistics saying Liverpool had however many percent possession 60 plus percent 70 plus percent you know, or how many shots they had Liverpool you know, were pretty much terrible pathetic even you know, for almost the entire match in possession they were slow ponderous static I, I see these players none of them seem to know how to pass the ball through the lines how to break the lines you know, with a pass and get into the space behind a pressure line they don't know how to pass through the lines they don't know how to break the lines with their passing and it looked like none of them knew how to dribble past an opponent either you know, how, how many times you see when opponents play against Liverpool when they have the ball, they're able to shield it, get on the turn, dribble past, dribble past this challenge, dribble past that challenge, and all of a sudden, you know, they find themselves attacking space directly, attacking the centre backs, attacking the defenders, or you know, even getting into one-on-one -on -one situations with the goalkeepers. How many times have we seen an opponent do that to Liverpool? And how many times have we seen Liverpool fail to do that against any opponent? It, sometimes it just feels like you know, they, they receive the pass an opponent is marking them yes but there's no there is no technical guile there's no finesse in, in the way they play their passes in the way they move they can't like I said they can't seem to you know, play a pass to break through that, that defense line you know, or, any, or any pressure line you know, they can't they can't seem to skip past a challenge you know, it's pass it forward and then pass it back left right front back but never really you know, never really forcing the opponents to turn around and have to you know, to to run back you know, that sort of thing so in possession they they were that you know, they were that ponderous for all the possession they had, 60 plus, 70 plus percent, you know, they never truly had you know, meaningful possession, as people would say, having it in meaningful places. Thursday was worse than today because Thursday, they, they hardly created anything at all. And the, the very few occasions when they did find themselves in good positions, they find themselves in good situations, where you know, if they could play the pass, you know, something could happen. I remember Thursday. There were two. There were two you know, incidents on Thursday, as I recall. So Gakpo got the ball, I think, on the left side, and he was you know cut in towards the center, and there was Elliot running on the far side, and all Gakpo had to do, you know, play that through ball, you know, to to Elliot. You just get it right, just nicely right in front of him and Elliot was in a good position 
you know, to, to shoot. And instead, Gagpo overhit the pass all the way out. A few minutes later, Gagpo got the ball in a similar position, in a similar situation, and Elliot was making that same kind of run. And this time, Gagpo didn't play the pass at all. So, the, these two situations, if you multiply the number of times that, you know, that something, something like this or something similar happened, that's what you get with this match. Liverpool, they, they did have you know, more possible situations today than they did on Thursday. But the number of times, you know, in you know, when they were on the attack, they had the ball, they were on the attack. The occasions when they did manage to, you know, to try and create an attacking situation, there was no composure, you know, in the decision making or in their passing. The pass always overhit or underhit, a yard too far in front or a yard behind the player. And this was happening over and over and over. And Nunes in particular was was guilty of this. Just just the number of times that all these passes over hit just just went too far. And of course Nunes was guilty, but so was everyone else. There were so many situations where a, a delicate chip over the top overhit straight to the goalkeeper cross that went over everyone, all the way to the far side, things like that. And what else? You know, what else? And then of course, you know, the, the, the number of the few times when they did finally manage to get into situations situations where it's a big chance you know, to shoot and score, they end up Shooting at the goalkeeper, shooting at the defender, and there was that one with Curtis Jones where he come just completely off target altogether into the stands. It was that kind of day. It's bad enough, you know, you know, the, just you know the way they they performed against Atalanta in midweek, and at first you know after that match you know I thought. Okay, fine. This disappointing as that was, you know, and upsetting as that was. Hopefully, it's just a one-off, and there will be, you know, a bounce back today you know, to you know, keep keep the moment to just sort of like rebuild the momentum again. You know, rebuild the momentum. You know, instead of letting one loss turn into two, two into three, and then suddenly all the momentum is gone, and then you end up and yet, you know, the team ended up with this today. Lack of, like I said, a lack of guile and finesse in possession, and then a lack you know, of composure when they do get into good situations. And then, of course, all that is compounded by the fact that yet again, the defense, there's always some kind of brain fart you know, in, in defense, some kind of silly mistake. They just can't seem to put together 90 minutes of clean, tidy defending without you know, without the panic and chaos. You know, sometimes you look around you, know, you look around the way the defenders are you know, sort of like running around and trying to you know, trying to clear the ball or dive in the tackles or whatever. You, you know, it, it, it looks like like a fire alarm went off and everyone's panicking and running around or whatever like, like a cartoon or something it was that ridiculous and the way the way Crystal Palace's goal you know, came about against one it's like one of those slow motion things where you can see it coming the player in the center is unmarked you know, no one seems to have noticed him and the cutback goes you know, just goes right to him. That precise pass. He's unmarked. He has the ball. Shoot. Goal. 
and, and therein lies the difference between the way Liverpool defends and the way a lot of other teams defend. You know, a lot of other teams, you know, when they have players back you know, and they're organized, and yet at the same time, you know, they put their bodies on the line, and you know, they make sure to, you know, to, they make sure to pick up their players. They know who they're marking, touch tight, make sure they don't have time or space on the ball, you know, or more than that, make sure they don't get the ball in the first place. As for Liverpool, you know, it's it's right there. The proof is right there. A player standing unmarked in the box, and no one knows who was supposed to mark him. How is that possible? You know, just how is that possible for a team that is supposedly trying to go for the title? And this is how they defend. You know, it's it's just insulting to watch. You know, it's, it's how I feel. The past week has been really very bad for Liverpool. You know, there is no escaping that fact. Last week, you know, the, the 2 2 draw against Man United. And someone pointed this out to me. After Liverpool dominated the first half against Man United last week, you know, wasteful as they were, okay, and they were leading 1 0. And then that Kwanzaa mistake, which allowed them to equalize for the one-one. Ever since that moment, the rest of you know that second half in that match, and then the whole of this Atalanta match, and then the whole of this match as well. Liverpool have shown next to zero composure. They have shown next to zero creativity, ideas, guile, you know, everything that I mentioned. Now I have no doubt that you know this Liverpool team have worked hard. For sure they worked hard, of course. But a title chasing team, a title challenging team, a title winning team does more than just work hard. Yes, Liverpool worked hard, but so did Crystal Palace. Hard work meets hard work. You need to have quality. To be the difference maker, you need to have quality to win the match for you. And Liverpool had none of that on Thursday, and they had none of that today as well. Just, just such a such a poor, pathetic performance as a whole. Now I said before, you know that. At this stage in the season, it's more about the results than about the performance. And you know, and as mentioned, the difference between Thursday and today is that on Thursday, Liverpool didn't create you know anything that can be considered a chance. While they did have a number of chances today, despite the way they played, right? you know the the shot that was saved by the goalkeeper, there was the one that hit the bar. There were a few that were blocked by, by the defenders when the goalkeeper was out of the equation. There was a one on one that went wide. You know. And and this one talking about, right? Liverpool didn't play well in this match. But when they had those chances, big chances, those precious few chances they had, you know, to equalize, to score a winner, to turn the tide of the match and just get out of there with three points. Chance after chance, miss after miss, waste after waste, and today they paid the price you know, for all of that. It's a very damaging loss, you know, for for Liverpool this match, you know, in terms of their ambitions for the title, and given the quality. Of Arsenal and Man City, this could very well be a loss that Liverpool might never recover from for the rest of the season. I don't know; it's entirely possible. I am still hopeful you know, that Liverpool have a chance. I am still hopeful that other teams can take points off Arsenal and Man City. But again, as we are. And looking at this right now, 
maybe it's hope against hope. And when the season is over, maybe I might look at I might look back at this moment and realize that this was nothing more than blind hope and that I might very well be wasting my time again.